Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, thanks for joining me today on Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here at Kansas State University. We got Dr. Chris Reinhardt that's going to join us. Going to have a fun show today. We're going to talk about pond management, whether it's blue green algae or making sure that cows don't stomp down our dam or making sure we have that farm pond stocked and harvested. It's going to be a great show. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Brought to you by the new hired hand portable cow sprayer. For more information, visit cowsprayer.com. Dr. Reinhardt, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's always great to be here, Dan. <laughs> well, this is friend and colleague, and when you're out at the cowboy colleges, you see Dr. Reinhardt talking about nutrition and production management, along with Dr. Apley and Doc, Dr. Knopfsinger. And we sure have had enjoyed getting to meet people that watch the show, and Dr. Reinhardt's one of those people that's constantly on the show. And today, uh, it's going to be something that's kind of fun. We we both work a lot in feed yards. We also do some cow work and some stalker work. And and today we're going to talk about ponds. And you know, there's so many things and dynamics about ponds, but the pond is something that's kind of synonymous with grass cattle and. You know, when we get our time off, our relaxation, and and being able to stand by the water, or things to that nature, and but it is it it is the the source and supply of water. For whether we're talking brood cows or stalker cattle, um, water is critical. You're a nutritionist as well as a, a veterinarian, and we can't give a nutrition talk without starting with water, right? It's right. the number one nutrient next to oxygen. It's true. <laughs> But, but uh, you know, when we think about water, talk to me a little bit about our water requirements. I mean, these, these cows drink an awful lot of water, stalkers, cows, calves, everything. Yeah, our, everybody knows we've, we've dramatically increased our cow size over the last 30, 40 years. And a lactating cow drinks a lot of water, even at, let's call it 40 degrees Fahrenheit. As we move that temperature up to 80, 90, 100 degrees we've had here recently, it nearly doubles her water requirement. When we talk about stalker calves in the summertime, their water requirement, they don't drink a lot of water when it's cool. They don't need a ton of water. When we add that heat stress element, they will nearly triple their water consumption and, and demand just to di help dissipate that heat. And a lot of times we'll say that, you know, cattle will drink three times their dry matter intake in cool times, but five to six times their dry matter intake in the summer times. It, and especially our English, English continental cross cattle, what do we like to say about 70% of our national herd is black hided today. Yep. And so if you don't really have any heat tolerant blood in those cattle, they're, they're gonna undergo heat stress to some degree, even though they're out on pasture this summer. And so the water is a big critical element to, to helping them alleviate that. And when we start to think about that and we start to think about heat stress you know the ponds warm up, and as far as their their uh, water temperature, but those cattle get down in the water, they they uh, will will uh, cool themselves off in the water, and so we're going to talk about things today that issues that can go on with the pond that can affect the cattle, issues that the cattle can that go on that the cattle will affect the pond, and and then at the end we'll talk a little bit about some things maybe a little bit more fun for for you and I on, on some of the stocking of, of ponds. Excellent. 
This is Dr. Chris Reinhardt. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here at Kansas State University, or I'm in the College of Veterinary Medicine and Chris is over in Animal Sciences. When we come back, we're going to talk about the blue-green algae. We're going to talk about keeping ponds healthy and we're going to talk about how to stock and harvest fish out of ponds. You're watching Doc Talk. Thanks for watching us today. More with Dr. Chris and myself after these messages. This Meet the Future Veterinarian is brought to you by Zuprivo. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Jim Coffey grew up in Prairie Grove, Arkansas, just outside of Fayetteville, on a small sheep and dairy goat farm. Since childhood, Jim has always had an affinity for animals, especially large animal production with cattle and small ruminants. After graduation, he'll be heading off to Disneyland. But after that, he plans to join a mixed animal practice in Shattuck, Oklahoma. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprivo. Zuprivo is a fast acting, long lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo from Merck Animal Health. Horn flies are a nuisance in a production loss, so getting rid of the problem is important. What I like about the vet gun is you don't have to go out there weekly to treat them with a topical fly applicant. It has some duration, it lasts, you see the increase in weight gain, it just works. I've used it in our 1500 cow-calf operation and it makes me more confident in saying, hey, this product's going to work on your operation too. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? This segment brought to you by the new Hired Hand Portable Cow Sprayer. For more information, visit cowsprayer.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with my friend and colleague, Dr. Chris Reinhardt. And we're talking about ponds and it's, it's uh, something that is we don't take for granted. It's something we manage, that we work with, that supplies water to our cattle on a day-to-day -day basis. And sometimes those ponds can have issues that cause problems for our cattle. Exactly. It's something, again, we don't take the water for granted, but because it's, it's, it's there day in, day out, we may not pay as much attention to it as we need to. And in the summertime, I think it's pretty critical that we, uh, we pay a lot of attention to the quality and quantity of the water available. And I saw a, a study done by Oklahoma State where they looked at, you know, nitrates and calcium, phosphorus, and, and different things of that nature of like 3,000 ponds and really didn't find any issues of water quality from, from surface water. You know, they had to watch things that would wash in the ponds, um, but, but why is it more of an issue in the summer than in the, the winter? Well, one of my favorite, uh, I guess you'd call it truisms, is it's not a problem until it is. And, and in the summertime, we just talked about the volume of water, cows will nearly double their water intake when they're underline, under borderline heat stress. Stalker cattle will nearly triple their water consumption. So if something is a borderline potential issue yeah. in cool temperatures and all of a sudden they double their water intake, now we may have a problem. And we'll even see that with well water, you know, because of increased intake, sulfates, things to that. Always test your water, make sure you got good clean source, especially. Uh, uh, water in, from wells but couple it with all of a sudden we have a bloom of blue-green algae if you go out in your pond and you see a, a green sheen or scum across the top that's pretty indicative now not the old grass algae but but you can tell the difference this almost looks like the stuff inside the lava lamp um, this description in the water and you'll form these blebs and these bubbles and 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 we have a real bad issue around around the Flint Hills and, and in some of our reservoirs 
Um, but this stuff's toxic. It's toxic to cows, to dogs, to people, and we really, it can be, be quite dangerous. It's a tremendous challenge, and again, it's something ranchers, not just here in, in Kansas, but throughout the Midwest, really need to pay attention to. Yep, and so the cyanobacteria will be, are part of this algae, blue-green algae, and they produce two types of toxins. And one of the toxins, the, the anatoxin, is kind of like a neurological toxin. And if a dog just gets a mouthful of this, it's almost like, uh, some, I heard somebody say it's equivalent of smoking over 100 cigarettes at once. But it can cause muscle tremors, neurotoxicity, and, and many issues. The, the micro cystins or, or that can cause the, the liver damage, okay? That's a long-term problem and is not as much of an issue. But if you get the anatoxin from the blue-green algae, this is when we get slud, salivation, lacrimation, urination, diarrhea in, in dogs, in cattle, and you'll find the cattle dead next to the, to the water tank. So if you have some abnormal deaths in a, in a pasture, or if your dog drinks blue-green algae, there's no reversal or antidote for this. So be very careful. We're gonna take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about how to manage the ponds from the cows after these messages. The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc. Ron Gill with Texas A&M AgriLife Extension. Our BQA tip for the day uh, centers around trying to get horses ready to, to go on to cattle. And there's a lot of different ways to do that, but they have to be broke. They have to be able to uh, stop, start, turn quietly. And that sounds very simple, but on young horses sometimes it's not necessarily the, the case. And even on older horses sometimes we have to take some time to get them calmed down to respond very quietly when we put them on cattle, not to overreact as well when an animal moves. Uh, sometimes our well-trained horses may actually be too aggressive in trying to stop movement. So it does take a horse that is attentive, uh, responds to the rider very quickly, but we won't, don't want one that's anticipating every move a cow might make. This hog is Hanover hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. It's easy to spot the man who uses Synanthic. With lower volume and less waste, Synanthic steps up your deworming routine. Get more deworming with less dewormer at Synanthic.com. The new Better Horses Network is worldwide. Presented by Lucas Oil. Featuring worldwide radio and TV with iconic hosts like Al Dunning, Sharon Camarillo, Ernie Rodina, Lindy Birch, and Craig Cameron. With American Cowboy, Horse and Rider, Brushy Creek, Cavenders, and Ride TV. Worldwide radio and TV. The all new Better Horses Network. Broadband has become as important to us as highways. That is why Doc Talk is teaming up with NTCA, the Rural Broadband Association, and rural broadband companies like Blue Valley Telecommunications in fighting for quality broadband access through the program Smart Rural Communities. I don't think we have any idea what's coming in the future. I couldn't have imagined five years ago what we're doing today. So in two years, I would guess there's things we can't imagine that we're going to be doing. To learn more, visit ntca.org forward slash smart or bluevalley.net. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. 
Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson and Dr. Chris Reinhart. We appreciate you coming to our Cowboy College and meeting us in person. And and since we went there, we're gonna have some coffee cups. Now I gotta back up. Our friend Hugh down in Georgia, who has the hired hand fly sprayer, which is a great tool and a great technology and something that we've seen used very effectively uh, to continually provide fly spray for cows and, and that. When we did our show on flies a few weeks ago, we, we did not mention his technology in the show, and we should have. And, and it's something that, that we've been, been looking at and utilizing some of the pastures, and it's something I uh, think you ought to take a look at when, you, when you're looking for fly control in your cows. But anyway, let's talk about ponds. What are some things we want and don't want around the pond? Well, the one thing, when I think of ranchers, the amount of time and, and just capital outlay to, to put in and, and maintain a really good water source, a pond, this costs a lot of money. And, and to take care of that and extend that investment, uh, number one, we want to make sure trees over time don't crop up. Trees, one thing we love about trees is they keep the soil loose. Well, in a dam, we want a tight, compact soil that's going to be dense and survive over the long haul. Number two, uh, we want to make sure the, the soil doesn't erode and silt down into the pond. And so making sure we've got a good stand of grass uh, covering the entire dam, it's going to hold that soil for a long, yeah, long time. And around the, the outside of the pond. In the entire, exactly. Especially if you farm around it, sometimes we don't know what we're going to do with that ground. And if you're a farmer feeder or farmer rancher, you know, making sure that if you're going to turn cows out on stocks, different things like that. We, we should just maintain a buffer strip of of grass around that, keep it mowed, but keep it thriving to just to hold the soil and keep it from silting in. And then finally, we've got, especially in the Midwest, but throughout the U.S., we've got burrowing pests that are gonna dig in muskrats, whether it's beaver, whether it's badgers, et cetera. They're gonna dig holes and, and they're gonna weaken that dam, they'll weaken the soil structure. And so we gotta control some of these outside influences. Yeah, well, and the other thing is, one of the things when we talk about breaking down a pond dam or breaking down a, a pond, these cows can be really, really damaging. They're their to, own worst enemies Yeah, to, to ponds. And one of the things when we're out at the Downey Ranch and working with Joe Carpenter and Barb Downey is, is fencing off your pond. And then there's a couple of options after you fence off your pond on how you can provide access of cattle to that water. One of them is a point source drinker where you just come and you fence down into the pond and across so the cows can't go out into it. We'll, we'll, we'll fence the entire pond except for this one area, provide some rock, provide some matting, some things so that the cows can go down and get a drink there without damaging the rest of the pond. Uh, they can't get out in it. The other one that I'm seeing is when we will take a pipe from the dam underneath the dam to a point source drinker or to a freeze proof tank. Where the cattle aren't even having to enter the, the dam or the pond. Right. Oh wow. And so it'll be below the dam you, and, it's, and they're freeze proof. And then you'll have a 100 gallon or 200 gallon tank down there and the cattle will learn. It's a little bit easier to move. Sometimes we'll put them right in the dam but it's actually a little bit easier to manage if you'll move them out away from the dam a little ways. But two things to protect your pond, point source drinker or the waterproof or the freeze proof tank that's, that's behind the dam that's moved off just a little bit. A couple of different options to protect your, your pond. We're gonna take a break. We're gonna come back. We're gonna talk about how to stock that pond and how to harvest from that pond when we're talking about fish. Come back after these messages. When looking at the number of farm and ranch operations, the USDA Census of Agriculture says cattle and beef production is the largest single segment of American agriculture. The census also says the average age of the American cattle farmer or rancher is in the late 50s. In order to support the continuous supply of U.S. beef, these producers need to do some business planning to successfully transfer their cattle operations to younger, independent producers. I'm Andy Beargo. I'm uh, owner of Beargo Angus Farms with uh, two of my sons, Bryson and Drew. Uh, we've been in business since 1950 and uh, a family farm's been around for 145 years. And, and we've, like everybody, we've been through some good times and bad times and doing well and having things that protect you and go forward to beef checkoff could be one of the things that uh, makes us global. We go to protect ourselves and protect our trading ability and, 
And one way or another, we're gonna to have to have people that will protect us and do that. I've always had this theory that you're either doing things to advance and do better. Um, I've never been a believer in this, it'll be normal or average. I'm, I'm a firm believer that we'll be going one way or the other. And without protection and advertisement and, and teaching people to believe in what we produce, uh, it's more about producing the consumer, that's our, that's our client, than, than maybe it is proving it to ourselves. For me, one of the most important aspects that the Beef Checkoff provides is sustainability for future generations. Um, my brother and I both have daughters um, that, that we can see a future in the life that, that our grandfather has lived, that our father has lived, and now that we are getting to be a part of, and also the opportunities out there for our daughters now. Uh, it was my dream when I was a little boy to own the home 80 acres, uh, and I've always told my sons that you either need a job well enough, you can have hobbies or do what you want, or you need to have a passion for, their, for your job and what you do. And I've had a passion for cattle my whole life, and, and my sons have a true passion for it, and I'm very proud of how they handle the farms. Uh, the Beef Checkoffs has given us a lot of different opportunities for our daughters to have a chance to come back and be a part of this in the future. Beringer Ingelheim Vet Medica Inc. knows the importance of beef quality assurance and asks you to step up and get certified. Go to bqa.org for details. Healthy cows start with the new hired hand automatic livestock sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher, leaving more time to tend to other vital tasks on the farm. To learn more, visit cowsprayer.com. The new hired hand makes healthy cows easy. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Chris Reinhardt, and we're going to talk about stocking that pond. And we like to fish. I love to fish. If you if you need a, a cow meeting in the summertime, <laughs> right around the farm pond. We'll just do it around the pond. But uh, I don't like that many people around the pond. But uh, we'll have a small meeting. But anyway. Ponds are part of our culture, it's part of ranching, it's, it's fun. Doc, how do we get the pond to where it is fun and it's gonna be fun for a long time? You build a new pond, you gotta stock it. And when we stock it with fingerlings, you, you wanna put on a per acre basis, is how we do that, but 120 bass, 400 bluegill, and 50 catfish. 120 bass, 400 bluegill, 50 catfish per acre. If you use sub-adults, which you can have people buy those, you know, and work with somebody that stocks pond, but then you're gonna put in fewer, and usually 30 bass, 100 bluegill, but still 50 catfish, because catfish don't reproduce. You're gonna to wanna to put in, whatever you take out, you put back in on the catfish. Gotcha. Okay? Bass don't spawn until the second year they've been in the pond. So, so you won't have any new bass or new bluegill generated until that second year, and so what you have to do is leave the pond alone. You have to leave that pond alone for two, three, four years until you start to see the bass be about 12 inches long. Then you can start to harvest it. A 12 inch bass weighs a pound, a seven inch bluegill weighs a third of a pound. And so I've left it alone, I've let them get to this really nice catching size. Now what? Well, you have to harvest fish. You, you know, you'll have people that'll say, we're only gonna do catch and release because I want this pond to stay full of fish. No, you need to harvest fish to keep it because you have fish that are spawning, you have new fish growth, and once you get to capacity per acre, you're going to want to take out 25 to 35 pounds of bass per acre per year and, and harvest it, and you want to take out 100 to 150 pounds of bluegill per year, uh, per acre. And they're a third of a pound each. So you want to take 300 to 450 bluegill out per acre per year. So if you have a two acre pond, you need to be taking 600 to 900 bluegill out per year. And if I don't? You'll wind up with, with overrun of bluegill, smaller bass, 
um, and you'll change that, that ecosystem of the pond. So, and don't just keep one species. If you just keep one species, you wind up with the other one overrunning the pond as well. So, and if I catch catfish, replace them. Whatever you catch that year and, and fry up, go ahead and replace those. Keep replenishing your catfish in the pond, but they can overrun the pond as well. But uh, great show, a lot of fun. Um, managing your farm ponds, making sure that the cows don't tear it up, make sure that you don't have toxins, make sure that you keep the fish stocked. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. You can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. Thanks for watching Doc Talk today. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to doctalktv.com.